spoilers? Oh, lots and lots of spoilers. Welcome to Max Mike. Knock it off. We agreed that I was going to do that. Stop trotting on my lines. What is going? Look, you, if I have to come over there, I am the Mike and Max Mike movies. You are just a two bit cheap dime store knockoff. Listen, replicant, you get out of my chair or I'll do you for treason. Get out. Move it, you load. I am so gonna. <laughs> Will you two just cut it out and start the damn show? Jeez, I knew this was a mistake. Shut up, it was an excellent idea, and you know it. You don't know your hole from a butt in the ground. No. Oh. Oh, enough of these frivolities, yes? Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll sort out all this clone nonsense later. Off mic, okay? <clears throat> right. Welcome to Max Mike Movies. It's a show about two best friends who like to talk about movies. Alone. With no one else in the studio. No. And this week, we're starting a brand new series. Seems that watching movies has changed a little. As such, going to the theater isn't quite what it used to be. Is this a permanent change? We don't know. But for now, we'll be exploring this new phenomenon in a series called Now Streaming in a Room Near You. We'll be watching films that were either released directly to streaming services or were released to theaters and streaming services at the same time. We're starting out with Apple TV Plus's, well that's hard to say, feature film, Swan Song, which just happens to have something to do with cloning. No it doesn't! Shut your noise, you. Before this gets out of hand again, let's hear from our listeners via the poll question. Poll question! Last week, we wanted to know what live-action movies you thought would perhaps be better animated. This is what you had to say. Our snowman from up north, snowman, Vince offered, quote, though it started as a radio play and went on to become a TV show before becoming a movie, I thought Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy would have been better as an animated film. Uh. Live actors just limited the humor and what could have been done with such an oddball story. There are always rumors that Jodorowsky's Dune will be made into an animated feature, and I am all for that, end quote. Oh. Thanks, Snowman. Interesting. Yeah. That Does would... whatever a snow can. <laughs> uh, n- n- no. Uh, that would indeed be freaky deaky. Ned, also via the website, which of course means a bumpy bonus, gave nope. us, quote, all superhero movies would be better as animated movies unless they're explicitly send-ups of superhero tropes like Mystery Man, Deadpool, and The Boys. The first two movies of the Dark Knight trilogy were admittedly really good, as was Thor, Ragnarok, and Logan, but they're the exception rather than the rule. Watchmen and V for Vendetta get a pass because neither of them really have superheroes, but both were still flawed in their own way, end quote. Mm. That's an interesting take, and uh, yeah. here's superhero wow. movies making the poll again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, boy, that was, the MCU would not be happy to hear this. No. Thank you, Ned. Matt Reisman, tongue firmly in cheek, observed, quote, most of what Disney has put out in the last 10 years. Oh, wait. End quote. <laughs> <laughs> then again, he's, arr, arr, arr. he's not wrong. He's not. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Uh, you know, I haven't seen that happen yet, but are we really that far away from Disney going? And now the animated retake of Lion King. Oh, yeah. uh, th- we did see that. The live, the so-called live action. No, no, no. The animated retake of that. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. No, I think we are. We're going to see that in the next few years. Yep. Disney, there's cash to be made. You can smell it. <laughs> I can smell it. Charles <laughs> Forsyth wrote, quote, The obvious answer is Howard the Duck. Lucas intended for it to be an animated movie, and the studio forced him to make it live action. It might have been good animated, end quote. And again, it's the superheroes... Wait, is Howard the Duck a superhero? He's part of the MCU. Um, wag. (laughs) Thank (laughs) you, Charles. But you're a duck! (laughs) That's pretty is. He is, of course, master of quack-foo. And who else could be, really? Dave, Ninja Lord and Master of Law, opined, quote, On the one hand, I believe that animation has far more potential than any other film medium. So if an artist with talent, vision, attention to detail, and patience were to do it, I think almost any movie could be redone and better in animation. I would love, for example, to see something done with Tokyo Drifter, where the artist tried to outdo Suzuki's use of color and took things in abstract directions. 
I expect that Memento could be remade with good effects. Another Ooh. one that could be fun would be Go because of its drug content. Would be happy to see classics like The Godfather or Casablanca done up in style, but would need a level of art that I have never seen in U.S. animation. On the other hand, I rarely watch animation anymore. <laughs> the trouble I have is that artists doing animation, by and large, are nowhere near experimental enough. Realism should not be the basis of an animated film. There is just too much cool stuff that one can do with animation, and there is no point in limiting oneself to anything realistic. Not every animated show needs to be children's fair, and I don't need more superhero animation. Unless you want to take on something like Dr. Fate or The Spectre, where you can go really wild. I also have trouble because so much animation that comes out is cookie cutter, done at low cost, where the characters are wooden and have no fluidity of motion or facial expression. End quote. <laughs> wow, that yeah. is a lot of material right there. That is a Very lot of Very interesting opine. points. Yeah, uh, all thought out well, and uh, it's a lot of good examples. Uh, I do yeah, wow. have to wonder, or he's like, we should do this and this and this animation. Oh, I don't watch animation anymore. Well, yeah, but he's saying if they had done, if they did animation the way he's suggesting, he'd be more, it'd be more interesting to watch. And it's hard to argue with that, especially about the cookie cutter stuff. Well, I mean, let's face it, and I might we may get some mail for this. Uh, who am I kidding? Uh, <laughs> anime is about as by the pound as you can get. You know, there's almost no anime coming out that isn't done strictly for the yen and uh, isn't just you know churned oh, out. You think? Now, yeah, I mean, the, there's a, actually a lot of news stories about the working conditions in anime factories that people are forced to like live there. Um, yeah, it's just not good. People, there's a lot of health issues with working in the anime industry, and it is uh, in general just churning it out because there's literally a limitless market for it apparently, um, and so it's not really about the story as much. But that doesn't mean you can't enjoy it. It's just that's the the nature, the reality of the process of it. So, how about you, Max? This was your question. What live-action film do you think missed the boat and should have been animated instead? I gotta say, now that I that uh, Charles brought up Howard the Duck, I think that would have been a much better idea, if, at least especially if they'd gotten a better voice. Yeah. For Howard, um, that was one of my big problems with it. Well, one of the many, <laughs> many <laughs> big problems with it. But oh yeah, it was just the voice. Otherwise, it was gone with the. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, yeah, it was a masterpiece. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I am not sure. It's so hard to jump genres like that. Uh, but yeah, I would go. I would go along with Howard the Duck. I think that should have been. That would be much better as an animated movie. Couldn't be worse. And, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it would be. It would be a challenge. <laughs> Honestly, I also think the Fantastic Four. I know we, but nobody wants because look, they've tried three times. Yeah, three times to do it live action, and it don't work. No, and now they're trying a fourth time. And I am not holding out high hopes. Yes, I know everyone's sick of superhero movies. I want to see this work because I don't understand why the Fantastic Four of all of these never has been done well. Because the Fantastic Four's characters are dull. They are, they don't have to be, though. They have a whole <laughs> lot of family conflict. That was the whole interesting thing about them. When they came out, they were the first like superhero team that had emotional issues and they've played off of that for years they could do something with that but they never do yeah sadly of course we have that now so we don't need more of it so yeah, it made them the special thing. yeah but, yeah um, honestly we don't really need a fantastic four movie because we've had the incredibles which was a lot better was the <laughs> yeah which was better and more fantastic but yeah, yeah anyway as for me my example is tank girl because I really en I enjoyed Tank Girl, but the problem with it is, besides the fact that people are like, well, it, they, they didn't adapt it very well and it wasn't as true to the source material. The problem for me was it had these really cool animated sequences that let you know how slow the rest of the movie was. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, if you point. had done this like those, if the entire film had been like that, like nonstop breathless action going crazy... It would have been awesome. I think um, you could have kept Lori Petty as the voice, too. Sure. Yeah. I actually like Lori Petty. Like, I have not seen her in anything I didn't like her in. Uh, yeah, League of the she's Rome, terrific. This. Yeah. Um, and if you, like, if you take the people, the approach that they did for Spider-Verse, man, Spider-Verse oh, wow. proves you can do superhero yeah. movies. But that's the thing, is that you have to take visual chances you have to experiment that's what dave was saying and i think this that's into the spider verse is a great example of that because that was so unexpected and yeah. so novel in, yeah. in the animation when i first when it, i first started watching the movie 
I was like, I don't know if I like this. I'm kind of uncomfortable with it because it was so colossally unfamiliar. And after about a minute and a half, I'm like, every superhero movie in the world should be this. Yeah. And it's like, I don't want exactly that every time. No. But the level of artistic skill and experimentation, yeah. I, I'd see that, I yeah, by all means. And it was fun, it was exciting. And here's the thing about superhero movies, they never capture the real speed of superheroes because you can't. People don't move that fast, and if you try to make them move that fast, it looks you weird. You can't see it. Yeah. And you can't you, you couldn't see most of it. But yeah. But anyway, we'd like to thank you as as always for your yep. answers. They add stuff to our show. It's really fun. Um, and as is usually the case, this week is no exception. We have a new poll question. Tell us if you would, how do you change your habits when watching a first-run movie at home from when you watch a first-run movie in the theater? Meaning, if you're at a theater, it's like no pee breaks, I don't get up for food, or I do have food, I don't have food, and I don't know about you, but I have certain things I don't do. If I can keep from going to the bathroom, I will keep from going because I want to be engaged in the film. But if you're at home and watching a film for the first time, do you turn out the lights? Do you do anything where you he's like, oh, I want to concentrate like I do at the theater, or do you just watch it and get up and do whatever you need to do? Please let us know, and we will tell you how to let us know at the end of the show because we want you to listen to the end of the show. Um, but uh, if you give us good answers, we'll give you good bucks. It's as simple as that. But right now, right here, we're going to start talking about Swan Song. As an extra warning, as this movie is still oh, yeah. playing, so to speak, it's going to be really hard to talk about this movie without a certain amount of spoilers. Oh, there are going to be a lot of them. Let's not kid ourselves. Yeah, if especially this film. If you don't want the plot ruined, go ahead and watch the movie while we wait. We'll just keep the tape running. Um, Off um, you go. Um, 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 okay, just so, kidding. Got any threes? The show. Trivia. Budget. Well... We have no idea. Nope. Take. Also, in this particular series, the question is almost <laughs> yeah. irrelevant. Yeah, uh, there is. are some movies that were released in theaters will have takes and have done fairly well. So when the, if those pop up, we'll do those. I am going to get this name wrong almost every time I say it. But Maharshala Ali and Naomi Harris were in another movie together before this one. Yeah. 2016's Best Picture Oscar winner, Moonlight. Or, oh wait. no, that wasn't the best picture. Was that La was La La, La, La Land. Land. <laughs> oh wait, sorry, sorry. No, it was Moonlight. Sorry. Let's call Warren Beatty. He knows. Oh. Ooh, too soon. <laughs> Ali has been in four movies nominated for Best Picture: The Green Book, Moonlight, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, and Hidden Figures. Two of those films won the award, and he won an Oscar himself for his role in Moonlight. Naomi Harris has been in lots of films herself, including, but not limited to, Moonlight, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, Skyfall, right. Spectre, and No Time to Die. In the last three, she paid, played the role of Money Penny. There's also, strangely, a lot of MCU crossover here. Ali is <laughs> slated to play the new Blade. Aquafina was in Shang-Chi, and Glenn Close was Nova Prime in Guardians of the Galaxy. Naomi Harris was Shriek in Venom, Let There Be Carnage, another Marvel character-based film just outside the MCU. It's... Over, uh, over there. MCU adjacent. Yes. This is director Benjamin Cleary's first feature. He won an Oscar previously for his short film Stutterer. Rur, rur. Currently, one U.S. dollar is worth 114.33 Japanese yen. Sorry, there was uh, damn little trivia for this film. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have okay, time okay, filling. Sure, what the heck? Um, stretch. Uh, do you know any trivia for this or anything? Even about the actors that I obviously passed over yes Mahar Shala ali should get all the oscars he's all of them oh so good and we'll get he to should the get the ones for film. best cinematography best art direction best <laughs> costume i don't care give him all the oscars yeah I mean, uh, especially i went well, i was looking back at some of the stuff he's done and i'm every all of them it's like that was him yeah. oh that was him oh yeah my god he's the bad he's vector the bad guy in Alita Battle Angel. Oh, I'm glad somebody saw that. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in a, a kind of goop cheesy show, The 4400. I forgot that. Yeah. I mean, my God. And uh, uh, Naomi Harris? Yeah. I didn't realize that was her in a couple of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Uh, what, what was her? Da, uh, Tia Dalma. Wasn't the, she? Uh, the, she was the voodoo priestess who turned out to be Calypso. Yeah. Wow. 
there. Very yeah. different look. I am very, well, we'll get to the acting. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, that's, that's later in the show. Yeah, um, other, yeah, other than that, no, I got nothing. So we'll go to the plot. Yeah. Cameron Tanner is a professional artist living with his pregnant wife, son, dog, and an inoperable terminal illness. As technology has progressed enough, there is an option open to him that will secure his family's future. Have a clone made of him that will have all of his physical and mental attributes. It, or he, will take Cameron's place with the possibility of the same illness removed from his makeup. Cameron will spend his few remaining days at the very nice facility, content in the knowledge that his family will not only continue, but they will never know a switch has been made. That is part of the contract. Thing is, Cameron has second thoughts, and third ones as well. Is this really the right answer? Is keeping such a secret from his wife whom he loves dearly a fair thing to do, or is he just being selfish? And is this technology, so far only having been used on two other people, really that reliable? And is the clone even really a person? Is it Cameron? Is Cameron Cameron? Where does identity begin and end? What defines humanity? Is that me in the corner? Is that me in the spotlight? Watch and find out. Give us a break. Buy us some dinner. <laughs> the low down. That's right. a deeper. Yeah. So uh, this is an Apple I original. think I might be Cameron. I'm not sure after watching this movie. <laughs> when Cameron was in Egypt's land, let, let my, my Cameron, Cameron go. go. Yeah, this is an Apple original. So this was not... Boy, is it. Yeah. Um, yeah you, <laughs> see, I don't know how much uh, their influence was in the film, but... Um, All the put... technology <laughs> looks like it came from the Apple store. Everything. The cars, the train, the this little server robot. But let's face it, all of the technology is stuff you really kind of want. Yes. And um, all of it, the, it, it was so well established right from the beginning with when he's on the train and the little robot guy comes over to sell him a candy bar. And it's the friendliest robot ever. It's such a nice robot. I want that robot. <laughs> I want to have that robot in my house. And the thing is, the tech is just a little farther yep. than anything we have. Except, there is a big except. Yes, I know. The cloning and the ability to transfer memories. Yes. We're no uh, cloning. Okay, you want to argue we're close to that? Sure. Memory transfer. We don't even know what, how memory works. Yes. So the, 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 that part is magic. Let's, let's just put it right there on the table. That but part you is don't magic. don't care. You don't. And the thing that I really like about the tech in this movie is that it is tech that is integrated into a world we already understand. They didn't try to design everything. So houses look like houses, streets look yeah. like streets, cities look like cities. You don't see things flying around. It doesn't look like every building has been designed for this film and everybody's yeah. clothes look so you know, future fashion always looks bad. It's yeah. literally a few things here and there that quite honestly make sense. I even like the fact that people are using little gestures, finger gestures to manipulate mm. their tech. Um, the personal... I like that nobody had a phone. I think it was nope. the watch. Or it was the contacts or the earplugs. Yeah, plugs. the contacts of the earpieces, yeah, but they don't actually have a slab, which of course is what's going to happen. Sure. Probably not that far from now. No, wearable tech. But And the thing is, is it was wearable tech that didn't look like wearable tech. Because usually yeah. it's got to be something that sticks out of your head. Um, or it, there's lights on it that are unnecessary. I love this. It's a tiny little thing. But these little round circles that they put on either side of his and they call the, his clone Jack. Uh, Cameron and Jack's head to sort of denote that there was something going on. Did you see they had like a little symbol that showed they were doing something and then they had a no, pause I symbol? That. Yeah, oh. it's like they really thought this out and to me that's what helps you get over the well, it's magic, don't question it part about the cloning. Because when you clone something, you don't get a fully adult version of the thing. No. You, you get an infant and like yeah, you, Dolly you the Sheep. Yeah, Dolly the sheep was a lamb, right? Then she grew up to be Dolly the sheep, but she you don't, you don't get the you don't make an exact duplicate. It's not how it works. Yeah, but uh, they also I, they didn't explain one way or the other. I'm assuming that Jack is actually organic and grows and stuff. Yeah, they don't, don't really say, but yeah, that, that's the implication. Because they, I don't think they ever actually call him a clone. Mm -mm. Like I think they call him about a duplicate. Uh replacement i don't know if they if 
which gets into some really interesting questions that I yeah. want to get to later. Uh, yeah. Let's. We already sort of started this. Let's start with the acting. Wow. Oh, my God. I, this is I'm so telling well you, done. give him all the Oscars now. So he has to play himself twice. And it's really subtle because it's got to be the same character, but it also isn't. Yeah, he plays himself in effect in two different states. Yeah, and I the the way when in effect he's talking to himself, mm -hmm. the way so much of the communication is nonverbal because it doesn't have to be because in effect they know what the each is, other is thinking. Yeah, and it's as he's accepting that they don't have to talk as much. Yeah, and it's all done through just little body inflections of body language, slight facial expressions. Oh my God, he's so good! And everyone, I, I was really impressed that Aquafina, who is still in effect doing her usual shtick, her you know I'm just a broad from Queens shtick, that her words by the way, and it's, it's touching as well as funny and yeah. tragic to watch. I just like her anyway. I liked her in Crazy Rich Asians. I liked her in Shang Chi. I go ahead put and I was when I first saw Aquafina, I'm like. I didn't think there was supposed to be any comedy in this. And it's exactly the right kind of comedy. Yeah. She basically is there. She. So here's the deal. We, we might as well explain this. You're a terminal patient. There's something that's going to happen to you that can't be fixed. You're going to die. You have this option to have a duplicate made of you with your memories. But the catch is you can't tell anybody that this mm. is happening. They have to be Anyone inserted. ever. Right. Yeah, because it has to be seamless. Because the whole idea... Is not simply you're continuing to live, but your family does not have to undergo the trauma of watching you die. Right. The idea is to spare them. And Aquafina is the second of only three people to do this, and Cameron's yeah. the third. And she's obviously in the final stages of whatever she has. It really doesn't matter. It's cancer. Matter. It has to be, because they, she, they both refer to, they have the same oncologist. But she manages... To pull Cameron out of his his deep pit that he's dug for himself, this is great scene where she's basically on her deathbed, and he gives her he's I made this for you, and it's a card because he thinks he understands her sense of humor, and it's a card that just says "Get well soon." She and is literally she, dying as they're she sitting is there. So brilliant! She <laughs> gives him this look. It's like that's really insensitive, and he's just like. Oh crap! I'm so sorry. And she's just like, I can't she believe the look on your face. Out laughing. That oh my god, your face, yeah. your face. And it's because that is her sense of humor. Yeah. He did get it, and it was actually really touching for her. Um, the 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 subtlety in the performances. Glenn Close. Glenn Close plays a character that you're never quite sure where she's coming from, which yeah. is great because this film, and I'll tell you right now, this film could go in a lot of directions that oh, I, was, yeah. I was afraid it was I was afraid it was, afraid it was to. That's what I thought. I was sure there was going to be a horrible twist at the end or... Yep, and uh, most, of it, the, most of it is because of her, because she's very from, subtle. Yeah. It's such, it's amazing. It's supposed, it's not just like a character study and it raises some interesting questions, but it's really tense. Yeah. You are really, wor you get so involved, you really worry, oh God, you're going to screw this up, don't screw this up, don't screw this up, what are you doing? No, yeah. no. Yeah. Ah! And, well, and then it's with Glenn Close, you're like, is she a mad scientist? I don't know. Like, what is her motivation here? Because it's a is, it just, is it just, like, is she out for money? Which we don't think so, but there's a point where it feels like she's pushing a little harder than maybe she should, but... I, Glenn, I mean, it's Glenn Close. Yeah. Huh? We're surprised she did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to understand, this, this movie has a tiny cast. The Really, the three main players are... are three main players are going to be the people playing Cameron, playing his wife, Aunt Poppy, and Glenn Close. There's also Aquafina, who's great. Even but though there's also the kid, the, the little kid? boy, Corey, who is both adorable and absolutely believable. Yeah. He's like... Oh, this isn't a movie kid who everything he says is precocious and, oh, that's our Cameron. Wah, yeah. wah. <laughs> he's, he's like, yeah, I, this, is, this is a real kid. I absolutely believe this character. Yeah, especially the way he delivers his dialogue. It feels so natural, like he's yeah. not even reading a script. Um, there's a couple of other doctors at this facility. There's literally three people that run the entire facility. Yep. And the Glenn Close's character at one point says, yeah, we have AI that does the work of like 50 people. 
Um, and everything is very clean and very cold, and you're not allowed to touch <laughs> anything. Um, yeah, it does kind of look like Cameron's house. but the- So there's a great, really great weight of this film placed on the actor's shoulders, because, again, the tech is in your hand it's tiny it's not flying cars it's not spaceships this it's, this isn't a this isn't a science fiction movie it's not that's not what you're supposed to focus on it's science fiction the way science fiction should yeah. be done it's about yeah. people it's about the human condition it's not about the tech the tech thankfully there's never a point where it's like really the conflict has to do with something going wrong with the tech yeah there's there's hints of it but that's not what this movie is about and so it's it is science fiction i'm gonna actually say that it is it's just it's it's the kind it's supposed to be it's about it's the best kind of it's it's and it's also it's really important and i thought that was a really nice touch that he's only the third person to do this this is not an established treatment this isn't regulated this isn't like oh everyone does this this is new so you don't know what could go wrong they don't know every right. they, they act like they have every contingent covered but you know they don't yeah and one of the doctors even says you know i don't think this jack the the, the copy of cameron i don't think he's actually ready and the Glenn Close character is like, he's fine. He's passed all his tests. He'll be fine. And I won't, I won't go and tell you what happens because we have to leave something out. But there are the way they deal with the doubt of Jack being competent and being able to take the place was really well done. Oh, yeah. Um, there's a couple of sequences that really highlight that. And you're like, oh, all right. Uh, there's another performance in a, in a TV show also happening to be on Apple TV+, Plus, which does a similar sort of thing, and that's Foundation. And there are actors who have to play the same character in different points of their life. They're the emperor of the known of the galaxy. And basically at all times there is a teenage version of the clone. There is a... In the physical prime. The 30-something version of the one that's actually in charge. And then there's the older version of the clone that is still around for, you know, being the wise elder, having all the experience. The same actors playing the same pieces or the same time period, but they play different versions of the character. And the subtleties in their performances are like this, where you can really see an act. I mean, as an actor, I would love this. It's like, this is you got to work for this because you have to basically play you're the same person on the outside, but you're a different person on the inside. And you have to convey that, and it's not just dialogue. In fact, it's not, there's not a lot of dialogue at all that says, oh, I'm, uh, I'm the clone, by the way. You know, there's none of that crap. Um, so, yeah. I mean, the only distinction we're told is the clone has an extra freckle on the palm of his hand. That is the only physical indicator that there is a difference between them. Oh, and he's not going to get cancer. Yeah, well, he's not going to get whatever the, whatever it is Cameron has. Uh, that was one thing in the science I ha- that kind of made me go, huh? Bo- that's one of the, the impressive things is none of the rest of it, I don't go, oh, I call no way, except for the memory stuff, which is one of those things I'm willing to suspend disbelief. They can do all this, but they still can't cure cancer. Really? Well, okay. we can The problems with... when Here's the thing. We don't know what he has. It, we know, it's, it, we're, it's most we're, likely cancer. Well, it's they most s- likely an inoperable brain tumor. That's because it's causing him seizures. There's seizures. And well. they say that he's going to have one that's going to kill him. And we see him have seizures, and they get worse and worse throughout the film. I, it probably is. We don't know. They were very wise to leave it out. As for the not being able to cure cancer, cancer, because it's not a single thing... Yeah. I'm willing to bet that there are still some kinds, and that's sort of you get the idea. There are some kinds of things we still can't do. Now, the one thing I will point out too, this is for rich people. Yeah, yeah. Poor. This is clearly not something. <laughs> this has got to be insanely expensive. Yeah, you don't. That get, was something. Yeah, sorry. I was going to say you just don't get to like you know put a down payment of fifty dollars on layaway and get a clone. Um, yeah, that was something I also wondered about. It was a very minor plot thing, but. How did he's married? So I assume his wife knows all the finances. How did he explain where all the money went? What's this charge on your credit card for um, cloning? Fifty billion dollars. Yeah, yeah. It, to me that's such a small point. I kind of don't yeah. care. But yeah, it it's worth. Really it is re- reasonable. Yes. How how do you hide this? Yeah. And who knows? Because the hiding it's a a huge part of this. Yes. Although, um, as is 
most cases with the portrayal of high tech companies and movies, their security sucks. Yeah, boy. Um, at one point, Cameron sneaks out by um, sneaking out. <laughs> yeah, he's well. He he also finds a he steals Doctor Scott's uh, smartwatch in from an unlocked desk drawer. Yeah, in an unlocked office. Well, to be fair, usually there's three people there. Yeah. So, eh. um, that being said, it's like after this, hopefully they learned their lesson. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe it's one of those cases where you have to fit a very specific profile, and right now they're still in the R and D stages, and so they're actually doing it for free. Um, no, maybe because you know he didn't seek it out. His doctor recommended it. Yeah. So who knows? I was afraid there was going to be. That was one of the twists. I was afraid because it turns out that Aquafina's character, uh, uh, Kate, that Kate and he both got went to the same oncologist and both got the recommendation from that oncologist. It's like I'm thinking, oh no, they're being recruited for something. They're being Scanners. chosen because they're being. <laughs> They fit some genetic profile. They're being turned into super soldiers. Like, oh, no. Okay. That doesn't go anywhere. Fine. No. And it's, it, you know, after watching, I like superhero films, but after watching a lot of films like that, it was really refreshing that that wasn't yeah. on the plate. Yeah, never um, mind superhero movies, but horror movies, body horror movies, side tech, tech horror movies. Yeah, I was afraid it was going to go somewhere like that, and it completely doesn't. And the film, I'm going to say this. The film, I think, wants you to think that it could yeah. go in those directions, oh, which is fine. Oh, it is fine. playing with you hard a couple, a few times. It, there are a couple of real fake-outs, every one of which I completely fell for. Yeah, me too. And I am so glad that it deftly leaped aside. All, or it basically yeah. was, it was a visual magician going, look over here while it's putting something in its pocket, and then later we get a rabbit or whatever. I don't care. Um, it, it, yeah, it's, I mean, obviously we're kind of giving stuff away, yeah. um, but that's fine. The performances again, we just got, here's the other thing. We start off seeing what we think is Jack getting the memories from Cameron, but then we go very quickly to the first meeting of Cameron and his wife, Poppy on the train and you instantly like these people. They're so nice. They're so sweet. Although it, I have to say. The meet cute they have, where she sits down at the same table, and she starts take eating his chocolate. What he thinks is eating his chocolate bar. Yeah, that is right out of Douglas Adams. I believe it's in the fourth one, or whichever one. Uh, so long and thanks for all the fish. Where Arthur Dent tells a story of sitting down in. A, this is something that actually happened to Douglas Adams. He sat down in a train station with a packet of biscuits. Guy sat down across from him. They look away for a minute, and the guy across from him starts eating the biscuits out of his packet. And he starts eating the biscuits at the same time in this sort of challenge, and they're just glaring at each other. The guy walks away, and Douglas Adams discovers he'd put his newspaper down on his own packet of biscuits, and he'd been actually eating the strangers with it. Well, see, That's there's exactly another... the way it happens here. There's a story about, and I can't remember if it's from a stand-up or a movie, where somebody says the same thing. They were at a McDonald's, and yeah. they put they they had their tray. They put it down on the table. They went to go get napkins, and they come back, and there's a man sitting at the at her table eating his eating her McDonald's, and he's just like she's just like what what the hell? And so she sits down, and he won't leave, and she just sits there and glaring at him, and eats the lunch while the guy is just sort of smiling sort of confusedly. And then she gets up and puts her tray away and leaves. And as she's leaving, her perspective changes and she realizes she sat at the wrong booth. Yeah. yeah I so. didn't mind it. I, if it, I, it came from another, I, I, it took it me out of it for a few seconds. I can see Unfortunately, why. it's at the beginning and, uh, that didn't, uh, that sort of just passed because yes, the two are friggin' adorable. They are. She's, I mean, Okay, here. If you're going to point fingers at tiny little nitpick things, he's a professional artist. She is a professional musician that works with kids and using music in, as part of a therapy thing. Um, they live really well for people who do stuff like that. But the guy's he's clearly he's a graphic designer. I yeah, mean, that's he nice. does He does a lot of commercial art and is apparently no. really successful at it. No. Ah, okay. <laughs> now yeah, they got an clone, awfully nice house. I gotta they say, they do. Uh, they're not clone buying successful. I don't care. I don't <laughs> care. The point is, is that we get to see him from the start as being vulnerable, which we don't often see male characters being, because yeah. he's just like, wow, I really like her, but and I just met her on this train, but I, 
eh, it's not appropriate. I can't do it. And then, you know, he, he, he draws a picture of her, too. And so the next time he happens to see her, he's like, I, I made something for you. And he gives her the picture, which is very hard to do because it's like it even says something like, oh, I'm not a creeper. I know it looks really like I'm a creeper, but I'm not a creeper. Oh, no, she says, yeah, it's better to be a talented psychopath than a talentless psychopath. <laughs> And then he's like, you know, kind of hoping to at least get to talk to her. And she hands him the drawing back and says, give it to me next time. And he's just like, and she leaves and she smiles at him. And man, could her smile light up a room? Oh my what? God. Um, and on the back, she's written her, which is, I thought was actually cool. It wasn't an email address. It's her oh. social media handle. Yeah. Which I so. guess, is, which the idea is that's now your, co your communication thing. Yeah. Your identifier. They make a great couple. We, I don't know. I really liked them as people. Yeah. Uh, their son was the was the best mix of I ain't doing that and good kid. Um, they're a nice family. You just like them. I just really and, liked them. And you find out in such an organic way, like there's a central tragedy. She had a twin brother who died. Right. And that really, that almost broke them. Right. It threw and her, like, for a year or so. She slept yeah, in the, the guest room. and They're they just talking. starting to get back, trying to, trying to put themselves back together. And you, you really, you get really involved. And, you, and then you find out she's pregnant. And yep. he's, she, he finds out that she is pregnant, or is confirmed, after he finds out he's going to die. Right. And... I think what's also interesting, and it's not something they put a big spotlight on, but we deal a lot when we're, because we talk a lot of, with Cameron as a character, not as much with Poppy. And he talks about how his wife made him feel, you know, she, she distanced herself and she wasn't talking. And it slowly comes out, especially when Jack, the clone, becomes aware that, yeah, that's part of it, but you were part of it too. And he has to face, actually, let's get to this. He has to face himself. This is a part of the Literally. procedure. I'm not sure. I can see why they did it, but it's like, is this really a good idea? Because yeah. once the memories are transferred, they're like, yeah, you need to go talk to yourself. And it's like, uh... <laughs> That was one of the points uh... where you're expecting the movie to go, there's going to be a fight, someone's going to get shivved, and it's going to be yeah. ugly, and there isn't. Oh. But... I mean, it's, it's actually kind of touching because in the middle with... I mean, at one point... Cameron starts yelling at Jack and just freaks out about this whole thing, which you can kind of understand because he's, wow, you know, you're not me, I'm me, I think. Well, and Jack's yelling back at him, and then Cameron has a seizure. Yep. And Jack just, it's so, he grabs him. It's like, hey, 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 it's okay. It's okay. He's holding him up. Yeah. It's so, like, wow. This, even, even in the middle of a rage, they, this guy is still a good guy. Well, it's the thing that's really interesting to me about the two different characters is they both have a sword hanging over their head. Cameron's is whatever his inoperable condition is. He's going, he knows he's going to die. Jack's is, if you say so at any moment, they push a button and I cease to exist. Yeah, like it, that's it's, really, <laughs> that's a hell of a thing for Jack to live with. It's like Cameron can change his mind like any time up to a certain point. And just say, no, I don't want to do this. And they never say it. But obviously, Jack gets put, gets um, sent to a nice farm upstate <laughs> where he can run and play with other clones. <laughs> the Daisy Hill clone <laughs> farm. Yeah. <laughs> That's really friggin' disturbed, which also yep. brings up one of the many ethical questions. Is if he is a person, aren't and are they, isn't that murder? Yeah. Well... Is Jack a person? Oh, boy. If so, the obviously the answer is yes, but the answer is supposed to be once he's inserted seamlessly into Cameron's life, that's when they actually remove the memories of him even being a clone. So Jack, at the end of this, if everything goes well, never knows this happened. There's no record in his memory, nothing, which also leads me to believe that it might be voluntary and or prepaid because otherwise what's this bill for i ain't paying that <laughs> yeah they, they they don't change his battery i don't know yeah that would be actually a pretty big thing it's like he wouldn't remember yeah, well, why the hell am i a hundred million dollars poorer or so, however much it would cost at what point like you could sit there and say well according to the contract you become a person the moment that you're inserted and that's the no turning back point but yeah, is but that really <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's pretty clear nobody knows about this process. This isn't public knowledge. I bet the AMA has no idea. 
I'm betting there's no kind of uh, regulation, but it does, like, it, it, that's a question people have been asking since the idea came up. Is a clone a person? Is, are, do they, in effect, I mean, it's a, the, it's a question I'm not sure can be answered because the real question is, does a clone have a soul? And you literally cannot answer that question. I mean, that's what Blade Runner was all about. Yeah. Right? You know, are they people? Are they not? They seem to feel they are. And isn't that sort of the central, like, thesis? I think, therefore, I am? I mean, how do you argue it? Consciousness, self-awareness? Yeah. And there's something, and this is one of the subtle differences between Jack and Cameron, is we find out Jack is inserted as sort of a test run, and he's supposed to wear contact lenses that have a constant video feed so that Cameron can make sure that things are going well. And Jack starts wearing them less and less, which, on the surface of it, to Cameron feels like one thing, but if you think about it, is probably a wise idea. Yeah. But the doctor, Dr. Scott, <laughs> <laughs> great, Doc, Scott. great Scott, yep. um, Dr. Scott says, you know, Jack's worried about you. He wants to make sure Jack is this obviously very caring character. It's like, dude could cut me off any time, but I'm, I know he's go what he's going through. Cause I'm him. Yeah. And I feel bad for him. This has got to be really tough for him. And he's putting Cameron even still ahead of him. And it's like, damn, that's a nice guy. And what a, I can't even think of the position he's in. So it's like, in a way, Jack knows what Cameron's going through, but he doesn't cause he doesn't have this condition and never will. And Cameron doesn't know what Jack's going through because the whole idea of identity and humanity is never a question for him. Yeah, he never has to worry, what am I or who am I? Yeah. And for the short period between creation and insertion, Jack is fully aware that he is both Cameron and not Cameron. Yeah. And that's incre I, it, that would create an incredible... I, 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 can't, I don't even know what the word would be. It's an incredible mindset. It's an end... It, there, there's also, to me, there's the, the ethic, I don't know what you would call it, ethical, moral, whatever, the question of, they, they say Cameron is making this decision not just for himself, he's making the decision for his wife and his family to yep. do this. He cannot tell them, ever, no one can ever tell them that he is replacing himself with a mobile pile of protoplasm. Yeah. What? Uh, uh. Well, I had, this is one of the questions I came up for a talking point. Uh, if you were in Poppy's place, so Naomi Campbell's yeah. place, would you really want to know? And that, uh, can you even answer that question? But if I you can't. Can, I don't think that can be answered. But that takes that is taking such responsibility. That's taking that's an incredibly arrogant move too. I get it. I mean, she said he hears her say, "If you died, I couldn't live." Right. I don't know what I would do because she's lost her twin brother, and the idea that if she lost him, he's, and he's that's one of the things that kind of pushes him, that that helps remove his doubts as he realizes, I can't let her have me die. I not one I can replace myself seamlessly, with someone who is effectively me. But wow, that's a that's a hell of a moral question. Do you have the right to tell that colossal lie to your even, family, even by omission? To deny them the right to, to see you, to be with you when you die? Because he's going to stay on this friggin' island with a bunch of strangers for the rest of his life. Which, to be fair, is probably days. Yeah, but what if it isn't? Yeah. I, people have gotten those diagnoses wrong. What if it turns out he, has, he lives another two years? That's going to be hell for him. Mm. But also... What if again a year? Hey, look, I'm still I'm still alive. I'm going to go home and murder my clone and take his play or something. Yeah, the the sheer number of things that could go wrong here. Yeah, are, is staggering. Um, if you were given the same position as Cameron, oh, God. would you pursue? Uh, you knew I was going to ask it. Yeah, would you pursue the clone option? Same contract, same deal. It would depend on the context. I mean, it's also different because. Um, Cameron has a young son and a child on the way. It's different to some, because it, that he has a sizable family that needs him. He's got, that really needs another person. But I don't know if I could set up that kind of a lie for someone I really cared for and said, hi, you know what? I don't think you're strong enough 
to, to deal with my death. I am making that judgment of, of for you. Uh, well, and I'll I'm make not it easy for you. I ain't doing this show alone. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll set up a clone for podcasting. Oh, good. <laughs> I know. I, I don't have kids either. Hmm. Because I mean, here's the, I mean, this is a, a question I didn't even write down, but death is part of life. It's part of the human condition. Yeah. If you remove that from the equation, admittedly, we don't know Jack could get hit by a car next week, and that's yeah, it ends up the same way. That was one of the things I was so worried about in terms of twists. At one point, the, he's standing in the street watching Cameron leave, and I'm going, <laughs> "He's going to get hit by a bus! He's going to get hit by a bus!" <laughs> Yeah, it's like whenever I see anybody in a movie and they're driving and talking to somebody, it's oh, like, look yeah. at the road, look at the road. Yeah, I know you're the... being towed behind a truck, but look at the fucking road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, and here's here's a question. So if you're having your clothes made and it's meant to take your place. Yeah. Are you in, in this case, Cameron, is Cameron in any way surrendering his humanity? He's surrendering his identity. Right. He's completely saying, I am no longer Cameron, was it Turner? Right, Tanner. Uh, Tanner, excuse me. It's, they hardly ever use his last name. It doesn't know. matter. Yeah. I'm, I'm surrendering. I'm saying this, this guy, for all legal and ethical, moral purposes, is me. Yeah. I think he's still a human. He's like, I'm still a person. I just have no identity. Yeah. I, I'm just, I'm a nameless creature now. I'm still a human being, but I'm now uh, isolation. I mean, I'm completely isolated. Yeah, he gives up basically everything. And that's the way you could say that it's not a selfish decision because he really is just saying, I want my family to continue and I don't yeah. want them to, to hurt. But it is still very selfish not to tell because you're saying, I'm choosing not to include you in this gigantic I don't know decision. He, I don't know if you could call it selfish because the reason he doesn't is to spare them the pain. Yeah. I mean, really, if you were being selfish, it, he would you would tell them because, like, yeah, I want you to mourn me and be be sorry, but you're going to have clone daddy here to take care of you. But no, Wouldn't I think that be weird. <laughs> oh lord! And you know, I, I went again, to my I, funeral, and honestly, I wasn't impressed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, I get why he can't tell. But if they're going to do this, you cannot tell them because no. how could you ever live with? Hi, yeah, you're you're my husband, but you're not my husband. You're my father, but my you're not my father. I noticed the dog has problems with yep. him because obviously, although I don't know why, apparently a clone sm smelled different or something. Well, he was made. He doesn't have, uh, there might be something in the dog's oh, sense yeah. of cell. But, Does he have a belly button? Well, you, I assumed it was, if he has an extra freckle, he has a belly button. Yeah. Um, yeah but I you know, at some point, there's going to be a pod people moment. Ah! Yeah. I kept waiting for it, yeah. Yeah. Eyes Look, were going to change color or something. Yeah. Hey, you know, it worked with uh, sc a scanner, so. Uh, I have a couple of talking points for our series. Yeah. Um, does this movie feel like it was made for streaming, or would it have felt as easily at home in the theater? I could have easily seen this in a movie theater. I don't think it was necessary. Yeah, I, I absolutely. This is just as cinematic. It has just as big a cast. Yeah, I, I think so. I actually drew some parallels specifically between this movie and her, especially the way yep. the tech is integrated into the movie where they're not trying to make everything redesigned at once. Yeah. Um, and I didn't see her in a, th a theater, but it, yeah, I did. Yeah. I don't, this didn't feel made for TV. Love you. Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like that. See our entire series on made for TV. Love you. Uh, would seeing this movie on a big screen add anything? Huh? I don't think so. I think, well, it would add a little in terms of, like, the the setting. The house shots and the stuff on the train, maybe. But this is a character study. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you need the character to be 20 feet tall as opposed to 2 feet tall to watch it. I, I don't think so. I, I mean, I don't think it would take anything away, but I don't think it, was it would be necessary. I think, again, because we tend to be, and we'll find out when people answer our poll question, but we tend to be less distracted at a theater yeah. assuming the audience but because we're there to do one thing we've removed a lot of our distractions turn your phones off and we're sitting in the dark of this giant screen and so we have i think the ability to be more absorbed depending on your home environment how you if you have a home theater or whatever um i think that could have added to the immersion but 
That being said, the way this film is shot is as clean and simple as the technology in it. There are very few shots where things are in any way busy. It's very pared down in a good way. Um, they're never giving you information you don't need. Um, it's also making me feel like, wow, the future is really clean. It's very um, clean and very uncrowded. Yeah. Well, there are, there aren't there are no scenes with crowds. There's never any scene with more than like three people, four people. Yeah. It's very focused. The film is very focused. It's like, yeah, we don't need to deal with the current politics. We don't need to throw in news stories on the TV in the background. Yeah. It's that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about humanity, you know, making the nature of or, identity. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't need that stuff. Um that's it for questions and uh, I went through my notes. How about you? Uh Problem is, most of my notes would be spoilers. Yeah, I know, uh, right? Yeah. I mean, we. I got. I will say one thing. Oh no, we'll get to that with the wrap up. Yeah, no, I think I've got everything. The roundup. So, Max. Yeah. Did you see this? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> Had you heard about this film before I threw it at you for the? Uh, I heard the title, and I saw, uh, you know, on the home screen for Apple TV, I saw m- m- the Mr. Ali's face, but. That's about it. Okay. I didn't know anything about it. I watched the preview and was interested because I was like, I'm very interested whenever science fiction brings up the idea of AI or you know, data, whatever. Is it a person? Is it, do we consider it a, a being like ourselves or not? I love it when they actually play with this. And some of my favorite films, Blade Runner, deal with this subject or at least present it and let you deal with it. So I was interested. So obviously you just watched it the first time and the only yeah. time for the show. <laughs> Surprise! What did yeah. you think? <laughs> oh, I thought this was terrific. Oh my god! Although some of it is very, it's kind of hard to watch. The edamame scene with his mm-hmm. son. Mm. Oh, right yeah. in the feels, as yeah. the kids say. Oh, suddenly I realized how dusty my apartment was. <laughs> You should get something done about that. I should. You should oh. uh, clone a nice cleaning person. <laughs> Yeah, I I think I thought it was so well done. And again, give him all the Oscars. You can give one. You can give give a couple to uh, to Naomi. You can give uh, actually give some to Glenn Close. She's been nominated so many times, and I don't know if she's ever won. Yeah, I think think she did win one, but I'd yeah, have to check. Give, give give lots of Oscars, lots of them, <laughs> all of them. Yeah. God, yeah. This could also as a movie, it's so well done. The pacing is so good. The cinematography is so clean and simple, as you said, that the tech blends so seamlessly. It's nev- There's never any point, I think, where the tech is like, hey, look at this cool thing we are showing you that you should be looking at. Yeah. What about you? Although if Apple does come up with a car and it looks just like that, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I would buy that car. I love that car. Well, and it's like Uber of the future. She, at one point, Dr. Scott just says... I have a car coming for you. And it shows up in a couple of minutes, and you realize they're just out there. Yeah, they're just robot cars wandering around waiting for someone who needs them. And that's, yeah. I love that. I think that's <laughs> a great idea. It's the ultimate form of like Lyft or Uber. Um, so I, again, as I said, I, I saw the preview on Apple TV Plus, and I was like, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. And I waited, and I'm glad I did it because it fits our series so well. There's all sorts of things this film doesn't tackle with this question, such as, hey, what if the government starts making workers? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And it's in a way, it's not important because the important part is we consider what is humanity? Is this a human? Is this a being? Is it us? Is it not us? Is it separate? Is it the same? That's what we need to think about. And that's more important than thinking about what if evil governments are blah. Because if this were to happen, we need to face these questions before it happens. Because like, yeah. the first thing, let's face it, the first thing that would happen if this technology became possible wouldn't be, oh, let's help the nice sick people. Let's be like, no, we now don't have to pay workers. It would be that kind of thing. Well, no, I think the first thing would be, ah, rich people can have now living organ banks. And then we get into altered carbon, but that's a whole other series. The island, yeah. I mean, let's face it. This is the nice version of this. There is yeah, no, yeah. there's no mustache twirling. There's no, there's all sorts of things that would happen if this technology was. There's no like uh, cloning super soldiers, or even just cloning, you know, soldiers, or, or like ah, oh, we will replace world leaders, or any of that stuff. I, let's go to Foundation, which I brought up, which is exactly what yeah. they do. Is it's like, yeah. oh, this emperor is great. We'll just keep using him. 
<laughs> He's so, going to rule forever. The important questions these film this film brings up are about humanity. What does it mean to be human? Um, and things also like, what if you did face yourself? What if you actually faced your exact duplicate? What would that be like? Yeah. Can you, you do that? And how would you react? Honestly, I think camera reacts pretty much the way a lot of us was would be, which is with fear and anger. Yeah. It's like, I didn't but, think it would be that good. Uh, yeah, yeah. What am I losing? What is taken away from me, even though it was my idea? It's terrific. I really like this film. The acting is superb. Um, I mean, there's no weak spots in this film. I will say, if ever a film were going to be look that was going to look like it was made by Apple, it's this film. Yeah. <laughs> so it's sleek, yeah. it's focused, it's simple. It's, and it's, it's white. Yep. Yeah, it's white. Well, it isn't though. The main, the only main white character is Doctor. No, no, Scott. no. I mean, I mean the the setting, all the tech. Most of oh. the tech is that smooth, shiny white yeah. stuff. That Apple just nerves. Yes, I really appreciate that the main characters are all African American. Um, I don't know why. I, mean, I guess it's prejudice, but it's like I have no problem uh, equating myself with these folks and like putting myself in their positions. I love the the couple. They're so nice. It's and it's so like, I don't, sweet. I don't want Poppy to be hurt. She's been oh. through enough, and I believe Naomi Harris when she tells us this. Yep. So yeah, if you've got the streaming service, uh, by all means, yeah, take, big recommendation. I really like this one. I would. It definitely deserves to be in in uh, best picture category, and of course, it can't be because it was never released into the theaters. But whatever. no, no, they they've uh, oh, they've changed the rules. Streaming movies can be. They were nominated last year. Oh, good. Yeah. I mean, will it be? Probably not. But I, mm. I of the films, and I haven't seen as many as I used to. But I, yeah, it's a really good movie. Yeah. But. We have uh, our poll question to uh, reiterate and uh, in hopes that you will answer us. Tell us if you would, how do you change your habits when watching a first-run movie at home from when you watch a first-run movie in the theater? Are there things you will do there that you won't do at home or vice versa? Uh, don't allow yourself to get up, turn the lights off, what have you. And you can tell us... The best way is to use our Twitter account. By all means, <laughs> tweet us at Max Mike, Max, Max Mike Movies. I can't even say the name of the show. I could. Shut up. Um, Going to have to go upstate to the farm soon. Daisy Hill, I'm calling you. Uh, you can, of course, uh, find us on Facebook, which is also Max Mike Movies, which is where we get most of our answers, which is fine. You don't get as many bumpy bucks, just saying. Uh, yeah. You can email us directly at us at MaxMikeMovies.com. We are probably on the podcast app of your choice, such as Spotify, iHeartRadio. Although Spotify, now I'm kind of wondering, maybe we should take ourselves off Spotify. Can we do that? Mm. That'll that'll help because <laughs> I'm sure that, that, then Spotify will feel the pressure. <laughs> that will cost them listener. <laughs> um, but yeah, otherwise uh, we're continuing our series next week yeah. on now streaming in a room near you. But with what film, Max? Don't look up. W what? I told you not to. Oh, God. damn it, you fool. You've doomed us all. No, we're watching the Netflix original, Don't Look Up. Oh, even yeah, if we starring do. Some, some guy, a bunch of unknowns, Leonard DiCaprio and don't know him. Uh, uh, Jen, Jennifer Lorenz. And no, no. Nope, someone don't know named him. Mariah Strepp. I don't know. Eh. Oh, well, yeah. whatever you do next week, don't look up. Well, no, do look up yeah. us looking up. Don't look up. Don't ignore him. I do. This has been a co-production of The Voice of Max and The Movie Wrench.